Minrata V, I think that's how to pronounce your YouTube name, I'm not sure. You asked me if I can give you a detailed kind of a tutorial of how to use the Smina 8 properly, detailed and slowly. Sure. So for anyone who hasn't seen the video I've made about the Smina 8, you can watch that after this video. This is a kind of tutorial that's going to show you how to shoot the Smina 8 from actually loading the film into the camera in the first place to taking your very first shot. I'm just going to go uh, over some of the quirks of this camera and some of the things to look out for when taking your first photograph. You can download a pretty useful guide on Lomography's website. I'm going to include a link in the description that gives you uh, sort of an explanation of some of the things I'm going to talk about when it comes to ASA, ISO, scales and things like that. Right, so here I've got an Agfa Vista 200 plus, my favorite cheap film. <laughs> and here we have this Mina 8. Now quickly, um, this is quite a quirky camera in that um, it's not your everyday point and shoot and it's not an SLR or a rangefinder. It's basically just its own thing. Um, one thing to consider quickly is that when you're composing with this, realize that the viewfinder is a straight through, so it goes right through the camera and comes out here. So there's a parallax issue. Uh, it's not what the lens is seeing and there are no guides of any kind that tell you what's happening. You just have to go by experience and um, <laughs> luck really. So a lot of the time, this is really cool for lomographers because you know the whole don't think just shoot paradigm really um, comes in handy here. Also with this camera, uh, mine is a little bit old and the accessory shoe is actually falling off that that bit there. Uh, there should be an accessory shoe, uh, accessory shoe for holding flash and um, usually obviously with a manual flash because there is no sort of electrical connection to the camera. There is a sync cable socket thing here but um, I've never used it so I have no idea how that works. Anyway, so here's the shutter button as you can see it's threaded and it can take a shutter release button to make it sort of um, you know soft release button or soft release cable which is probably highly recommended if you're going to be shooting in the bulb mode. More on that later. Anyway so to open the back of this camera as I said in my original video you click on this latch, well you pull this latch here, you don't click on it, you pull it and that opens the back. Now when you open the back what you see is you see uh, a free sp spindle, you should have this here, if you don't have this there then you need to somehow get one of these maybe from eBay or maybe from I don't know another camera or something but um, you know it's got to fit perfectly and um, what happens here is you Make sure it's in the correct orientation. There's a bit of like a line in there that matches up to this. And that's how the, um, sorry, that's how the film advance happens. Okay, so you just put the film here and roll it slightly. There we go. And, and just line this up here and just insert that. And if I were you, I'll just wind this a little bit just to ensure this is nice and flat. And then close the back. So now the film is loaded. Now, of course, uh, that patch is already exposed. If I just open it again, because this bit here is already exposed. Uh, you want to wind this forward maybe once or twice just to get an exposed film out from the canister. So also before you do that, you might want to set this frame counter to zero because uh, it doesn't reset automatically like some cameras would. So um, now you can just go, you can just wind that forward to a full wind. You see that advance slightly and then done. Well, actually that did. I should have showed you, I'd already cut the shutter, but what you should do is cut the shutter that way. Boom. Now, wind it again. So now on, you're on your first frame, right? So now, how do you, how do you make sure you, you've got the correct settings? Now, if you look at the front of the camera, you have the lens 
and here is the focusing ring and here is the aperture uh, well the shutter speed ring sorry and in a way the way um, this camera is set up is they try to guide you through something called a sony 16 rule so you have apertures f4 f5.6 f8 f11 and f16 and that corresponds with uh, sunny conditions uh, sunny with a bit of cloud patchy clouds cloudy and dark clouds or indoors now what that means is um, for every condition you have to set the aperture to match the uh, con uh, each of those conditions provided you've set your film speed and your shutter speed to be the same that's another thing that's quite confusing about this camera because actually what you're changing to match that condition here is the shutter speed and not the aperture i'll show you in a minute so i showed you earlier that the film speed was 200 um, you could use 100 you could use 400 but um 400 speed film is the maximum that you can use with this camera because it doesn't let you set the iso higher than that talking of which if you look at the front of the camera in front of the lens here this thing here is the aperture ring the, the black ring there that's the aperture that's how you set the aperture not here even though the aperture figures appear here the aperture is actually set here so now i put in 200 speed i need to set that to 130. the reason being those speeds that you see there don't actually correlate with um the film speed you see on films 35 millimeter film that you buy nowadays they actually <laughs> mean some they actually mean something different and that scale you can find on the lomography website where it tells you what each one of those things is for instance that 250 there that actually means 400 which means 200 speed means 125 probably but uh you know 130 is good enough and this is what most people get wrong actually they would set that 250 when they have 250 film and don't realize that in fact they're setting their um, ASA to 400 but because negative film has great latitude it usually doesn't matter that much it's just slightly slightly less than one stop so you're probably overexposing a little bit which is desirable anyway I'll leave a link to the guide in the description where you can figure out what your ASA is um, Again, maximum ASA is 400 unless you know what you're doing you're pushing or pulling or doing something fancy um, the highest ISO that you can use with this camera is actually 400 so I've set my ISO if you look here you see that it's selected f11 now you can't change that association it's just selected it for me um, because I'm using the second to the highest I guess ISO speed if I were using 400 it would set it to f16 it's just the way that this camera is so my option here is f11 now based on that I then look at the scenario outside if it's sunny cloudy I make a decision and pick um, whichever one so if I'm outdoors and it's sunny and I pick the sunny by moving the selector to the sunny figure you will see that the speed 250 has been selected automatically so those are coupled and there's nothing you can do about it so what you're really changing is the shutter speed to match whatever the conditions are so in a way that's kind of aperture priority if you think about it so you select a set aperture and you have to pick a speed to match whatever the um, conditions are outside so again if it, if i then go indoors and i pick that amount then the shutter speed selected we've gone to 1 over 15. okay so that's 1 over 250 1 over 125 1 over 60 1 over 30 and 1 over 15. now i wouldn't advise holding this camera by hand uh, for anything less than 1 over 30 F so you might need a tripod for 1 over 15th unless you've got incredibly steady hands so once the settings are done you cut the shutter by pulling this down and then you compose by looking through here right and very carefully making sure your fingers are not blocking this 
you hit that's it picture taken now I'm sure you've noticed that I don't have to wind the film and I don't need to advance the film to the next frame to cut the shutter again and take yet another shot and that my friends is multiple exposure because I've now exposed twice onto the same frame and with the Smina I can do this an infinite number of times which is one of the reasons why this camera is so beloved by people even though it's really really simple it's developed cult classic followings because multiple exposure now if I want to mess around with you know if I want to be creative of course I could lie about the uh, aperture settings I can say um, I want you know an, I want f4 right but because I've gone three stops on the aperture I have to compensate by going three stops on the shutter speed so I need to go up to one two three one of one two five so again the exposure will be the same but now I have a different depth of field because I'm using a wider aperture so that's basically it it's actually quite a simple camera to use once you get the hang of it just remember not to block this on the way back. Keep your fingers clear of this mechanism here, otherwise you can end up with really, really blurry pictures. And again, it's the king of multiple exposure. So have some fun with it. I hope that helps. If you have any more questions, put it in the comment section and I'll see what I can do. Okay, peace.